Hey, what's up, girl? It's the girl world. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep that just because I like when the show is live. <laughs> what's what, on what, your what mind? We just, you, know, you know what's funny? I was just talking to one of the producers I'm doing a movie with in Louisiana, and I, you know, I'm life coaching him about the situation with his wife. And I just hung up with him and got on with you. So yeah. that's where that came from. <laughs> uh, let me try that again. Hey, what's up, world? It is the HPR Chronicles podcast with Shakur and Smith. And the first thing I want to say is, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, not a democracy for which it stands. That's what it actually should say. <laughs> but, yeah. it, but as we all know, it actually says, you know, and to the republic for which it stands. And America is a republic. It's not a democracy at all. And we're going to go through what, what that all means today on the HPR Chronicles podcast with Shaquan Smith. Thank you, Smith, for signing on. It's always good to see you. You too. Uh, thank you, brother, a.k.a. Crispy. You may hear me say Crispy. You may hear me say Smith. But either way, you know it's the same guy. If you like to watch these two handsome gents, we're on YouTube on YouTube channel ISC and T Group Digital. Please subscribe, hit that notification button. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, Smith is a veteran of the Army Reserves who currently works for the VA. I'm a film and TV producer, director, writer, and we both share a love for history, politics, and race, and we love to travel. And uh, this is our show. And once again, today we're going to talk about America uh, being a republic, not a democracy. We both have done some studies on this and kind of like what we like to do on this show is kind of present the information to you guys. And then Smith and myself will have a conversation about it and give our opinion on what we just presented. And today what I'm presenting, and I will put the information in the description. I got it from thoughtco.com uh, and I'll put that link in the description. You can see where I, where I got it from and, I'll present it. Smith will give us input and we'll have a dis we'll have a discussion, man. And if you didn't know that we we were a republic, now you're gonna know and you're gonna understand what it all means. <laughs> you have anything you wanna add, Smith, before I, I uh, jump into it? No, no. Go ahead and let's get into this. Cool, cool, man. And and then this is for this is episode sixty nine and this is for that's probably where I, why I said girl. Sixty nine. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is episode sixty nine, guys, and this is Friday. October uh, 30th. Yes. Yeah, Friday, October 30th. And uh, yeah, here we go. So let's talk about it, uh, ladies and gents, and, you know, everybody on YouTube and on all the streaming platforms. Uh, in a pure democracy, all citizens are eligible to vote and take an equal part in the process of making laws that govern them. In a pure or direct democracy, the citizens as a whole have the power to make all laws directly at the ballot box. Today, some U.S. states empower their citizens to make state laws through a form of direct democracy known as the ballot initiative. We have a lot of ballot initiatives here in, in California. And, you know, we have all these propositions that we have to vote on for this year. And that's what be, that would be what those ballot initiatives are here in California. Put simply, in a pure democracy, the, the majority truly does rule and the minority has little or no power. The concept of democracy can be traced back to around 500 BCE in Athens, Greece. Athenian democracy was a true direct democracy, mobocracy it says here, under which the public voted on every law with the majority having almost total control over rights and freedoms. And Smith, uh, stop me to interject at any moment, but I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. the, the concept of a republic, let's talk about that first. In a republic, the people elect representatives to make the laws and an executive to enforce those laws. While the majority still rules in the selection of representatives, an official charter lists and, and protects certain inalienable rights thus protecting the minority from the arbitrary political whims of the majority. In this sense, republics like the United States function as representative democracies. 
In the US, senators and representatives are the elected lawmakers. The president is the elected executive and the constitution is the official charter. Perhaps as a natural outgrowth of the, the, uh, the Athenian democracy, the first documented representative democracy appeared around 509 BCE in the form of the Roman Re Republic. While the Roman Republic's constitution was mostly unwritten and enforced by custom, it outlined a system of checks and balances between the different branches of government. This concept of separate governmental powers remains a feature of almost all modern republics, right? And, I, and in my research, before I explain what a, it, it, if the United States is a republic or a democracy, we already said it's a republic, I found out that this little town in Sweden is the only true democracy left basically on the planet. Everything else is a republic, which I also didn't know. I thought we were the only ones that was actually a republic. But there's this one town, I forget the name of it, that's still a true democracy, but the rest of Sweden is also a republic. Okay, and is, the, go ahead. And just inter So the biggest difference um, between <clears throat> a democracy, democracy and a republic is democracy, everyone gets to come together and majority would rule. Yep. Where with the Republic, you vote someone and, you know, majority, whoever wins that election, then the representatives. The size for the majority. Yeah. Right. And in one instant, well, we can discuss more. After, right. Exactly. Exactly. That That's the podcast part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, 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 yeah, guys, is, is the United States a republic or a democracy? Here we go. The following statement is often used to define the United States system of government. The United States is a republic, not a democracy. I'm going to repeat that. The United States is a republic, not a democracy. This statement suggests that the concepts and characteristics of republics and, and democracies can never coexist in a single form of government. However, this is rarely the case. As in the United States, most republics function as blended representational democracies featuring a democracy's political powers of the majority tempered by a republic's system of checks and balances enforced by a constitution that protects the minority from the majority. Damn, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going to, 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 to say that the United States is strictly a democracy suggests that the minority is completely unprotected from the will of the majority, which is not correct. Yeah. Uh, re republics and constitutions. As a, as a republic's most unique feature, a constitution enables it to protect the minority from the majority by interpreting and, if necessary, overturning laws made by the elected representatives of the people. In the United States, the Constitution assigns this function to the United States Supreme Court and the lower federal courts. For example, in the 1954 case of Brown versus the Board of Education, which we all have heard about, heard of in school and all that, the Supreme Court declared all state laws establishing separate racially segregated public schools for black and white students to be unconstitutional. In its 1967 Loving versus Virginia ruling, the Supreme Court overturned all remaining state laws banning interracial marriages and relationships. I didn't even know it was against the law at one point. <laughs> I think Actually, I didn't know that. You know, you know what? what you know what's interesting is I swear on the ballot in Louisiana, I want to say, mm -hmm. somewhere down south, they are actually voting to remove that language off of their from, from their laws because it's still there, even though serious, even though people do it. Yeah. Wow. Still to this day, there's you know there's one state that makes it illegal for um, inter you know uh, mixed or uh, interracial, in, in, interracial relationships. relationships. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, guys. So more recently, in the in the controversial Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission case, the Supreme Court ruled five to four that federal election laws prohibiting corporations from contributing to political campaigns violated the corporation's constitutional rights of free speech under the First Amendment. The constitutionally granted power of the, of the judicial branch to overturn laws 
made by the, le the legislative branch illustrates the unique ability of, of a republic's rule of law to protect the minority from a pure democracy's rule of the masses. But see, what's interesting about that, and that, that's, that's it for our listeners as far as the presentation. Now, now we can get into a discussion about the whole thing. And you want to know what's, what's interesting, Smith, about that last portion that I just read? Mm -hmm. now, now, in this case, the public would like that corporations are not able to contribute to political plan campaigns. Correct. So if it Correct. was a real democracy, we all could say, no, we don't no. want that, and it wouldn't be. And, yeah. and, and see, this is the false sense of freedom that I've always heard about in, in the United States. And this is a prime example of how it's not a democracy. Because yeah. everybody that I know don't want corporations to be contributing to elections. Yeah. And if, it, if we were truly a, a democracy, which they always spout on the news every day, yeah. we wouldn't have that right now. <laughs> and the majority can go, we don't want that. Why do we have it? Yeah, exactly. You know and what I'm one saying? thing, oh yeah. And then um, another thing of a better way to, um, one thing I was reading that said, what type of government is the U.S. exactly? Mm -hmm. And the best term is federal con constitutional representative democracy or yeah. federal constitutional republic. So, right. and then if we were to, if I were to just, if I could add some more, a constitutional, um, our, sy our system of government is considered constitutional because the power exercised by the people and their representatives is bound by the constitution and the bro broader rule of law. Federal, um, our government is also a federal system since power is shared between a national government um, overall, you know, right. uh, and then representing the po entire populace and regional and local governments. That would be your state and city and all the other stuff, counties. So it is kind of interesting how they, they did, you know, they blended the two in order to make things work where if, it, if things were true democracy, which I, I get, but it's interesting that that's how tyranny can come about. So like we, we've done um, our podcast about getting rid of the electoral college. Mm -hmm. If we weren't to stay, if we want to stay um, the government that we have currently with being a Republic, you don't want to get rid of the electoral college because then each state has the same amount of representative as um, so California being as big as it is. And some people are feeling like, Oh, there should be more senators or whatever to represent the whole, mm -hmm. all the people here. Mm -hmm. You've got a state like Montana that doesn't have as many people there. Mm -hmm. So they would lose their voice and become more the minority instead of the majority. All right. So, 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 so let me, let me push, push back on that, that a bit. And this is what makes our podcast interesting because we have different views. Now, now you see how you say California has so many people we would win. To me, that just puts it on the politicians to win California. If, if you have the, if you're giving the people what they want, then you wouldn't have to worry about losing California. You know what I mean? You would have the majority of California voting for you the way they, where they would vote the Democratic side. Maybe it'll split. So there's 18 million people in LA County. Let's use LA County, for example. There's 40 million plus in the state, right? Okay. Let's, let's just use the whole state. There's 40 million plus in the whole state. Yeah. So let's say the Electoral College didn't exist, right? Mm -hmm and you had Biden and Trump, right? Mm. And yep. they both went so hard that Biden got 39 million, Trump got mm -hmm. 40 million, let's give Trump the edge, or vice versa. Who, who, who's to say that if it was a more level playing field that these guys couldn't, you know, couldn't be uh, encouraged to work harder to get all those popular votes if the electoral college didn't exist? So and, you know what I mean? And, 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 and they're actually, there's one state, and I forget the state, and audience, you could look it up, but I, I went over it, I, I ran across it today studying for the show, but there's one state that actually has a measure on to end electoral college in their state. You know what I'm trying to say? So, sure. so you know what I'm trying to say? So if it didn't exist, <clears throat> it would just push these politicians to work their asses off harder. You know what I'm saying? J just because the electoral college doesn't exist doesn't mean that 
the majority of the 40 million people in California are going to go Democratic. If the Republicans were doing the right thing, they would have more votes from uh, California. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, and to me, if you, it didn't exist, it would just make it a, a more level playing field. Go, go ahead. Okay, so when you were using your example, you said there's 40 million in California. Yeah. And you said 40, 40 and 30, and I think you meant like 20 and 19 or something like that more. Like say, if say got, again? So there's 40 million people. Right. If Trump got 20 million, is that what you meant? And then Biden instead only got 19, so that it was close to 40, but yet he got major. one of them got majority of the um, – residents in california yeah 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 yeah. that's what i meant yeah like okay. yeah, exactly okay. so yeah so so if one yeah. got 20 and one got 19 and guess what i mean you know what i meant okay. thanks for yeah. well i just wanted to clarify <laughs> thanks for clear that up exactly 40 and 39 i'm like that's, bro that's these crazy. numbers with with the electoral college is so convoluted that it's easy yeah. to get like oh yeah well okay like, yeah, right. that's what i'm trying to say it would make I, it a I more get... level playing field well, it would it would mean that they would have to, of course, do better campaigning. Um, exactly. N- now, it would also mean that the cities would still be the ones that kind of get to, well, okay, I've always heard the complaint is that you've got certain cities that end up making rules that um, the small, the bigger cities end up making rules that the smallest cities have to deal with, right. but they don't agree with. Um, that might make things a little bit more, you know, not honest, but just a better represent representation. Because even though we're in California, it's not like the whole state is actually Democrat. You know, we know that. Right. <laughs> so that, that's what I'm though saying. It's even though it's Democrat, majority, right? it's majority Democrat. Majority, yeah, yeah. But the whole state is not Democrat. You're absolutely right. So it would give. Republicans that live in this state a bigger, a, more of a voice than they would if the, if if it stuck with the electoral college. That's what I'm saying, and 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 as Angela Rye said the other day on the Breakfast Club, and as we've talked about the electoral college, I'm gonna use her words exactly, and I'm quoting: the electoral college is a vestige of slavery, and it needs to be abolished. Period. You know what I mean? And and again, it would just make it a more level playing field. That's why I said, let me push back understand what 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 you're saying about about it being a republic and having the representatives represent each state but that kind of makes it unfair and 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 especially when it when it was created out of something that shouldn't even been shouldn't have even uh been a been a part of american history anyway the whole slavery thing but if you make it a more if you make it a more level playing field everyone would have to work man because this is the the United States of America. This 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 isn't oh because Montana is smaller, United States of America. Let's give them more electoral college votes because they only have a certain amount of people. It's not giving them more. It's just it's not giving them more. Everyone has every state. It has the same number. No, you know? all the numbers are different. If you if you if you look at the map, the electoral college map, all. The, Every state has a different actually. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You're yeah, right. that is a big. There, there is a different number. You're, you're right. right. That's what I'm okay. saying. It's it's the United States. So so if the majority of the bro and, and and I'm gonna end it here for me, it would just make those mother suckers work harder. And I'm talking on both sides. Yeah. And it'll really be a democracy as it, as it opposes as it pertains to electing our our uh, president, because yeah. everybody would have to work there butts off the democrats who think oh well montana is most so so how about you get some of those people give them some of those people what they want to you but you also what i'm trying to say i got you, you, know I got you. It's, it's not our fault that in our state we have 40 million and texas has i think what 20 million or 30 million yeah. or whatever it's the second largest state or whatever it's not our fault and montana only has half a million people in the whole state <laughs> This is the United States. Yeah. We all make up the 300 plus million in this country. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Anyway, well, that, that's, oh man, okay, so it just really pisses me off. Yeah. Well, that's the part. Okay. So what's interesting is as I was reading this, the front as you know, they kept phrasing it, the framers of the constitution. So the ones that wrote all this, they never intend, intended the United States to be a democracy, a true democracy. Right. 
They wanted it to stay right. to be a they Republican. Didn't, right. They didn't want the people to have power. Well, it's not just it's, the people. It's yeah. they, they. Okay, so if you, again, I, ideally the, I, the thought is the majority rules. But if you make majority rule, then the minority is always kept suppressed, if, if right. possible. So that's where it allows um, people who are underrepresented to still be re- represented, if that makes sense in any sort of way. Right. Um, so do I, again, I, I'm kind of back and forth. I'm just saying that if we go with what, um, how it was conceived and their idea and they didn't want um, tyranny to become um, part of this country, um, mm-hmm. then being a republic is the better option. Because all it does, all it does take is, because um, some of our stuff is not um, a democracy and some things are, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, um, the you know, Supreme Court. And I'm just, that was one of the examples. L- look, at, look, look, look at what just happened with that. If it was a true d- democracy, what's her name? Amy, whatever? Barrett she, she, would not be. She wouldn't yeah. be going there right now. Correct. No Correct. one in and the public w- would have said, okay, put her in. If it was really a democracy, but we have no control. We, we, didn't, we, didn't, have, we didn't even have a say in the matter. Correct. Correct. You know what I'm that's, saying? And that's, and that's kind of one of the points was certain, there are certain systems within our country, like Supreme Court, that are put in for lifetime um, um, positions. And it's not something that uh, the people get to make any discuss, you know, dis- um, decision with. It's just the president gets to decide and then the Senate gets to push it through. And then that is not a democracy. Oh, you know, no. And the Senate yeah. lost 52 to 48. Again, if we let, if we let the people choose, yeah. she, wouldn't, she wouldn't have gotten sworn in today or last night. Correct. Correct. She would have done, she would get sworn in after the election. Right. We, or, we, we, we would have said. There's no one to decide after, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But because no. this is not a true democracy and they try to make it seem as if it is, yeah. you know what I mean? We had no say. And, and, and think about the potential effects to our families this chick could really have if she does what they're saying she'll do. Like get rid of the Affordable Care Act, aka yeah. Obamacare. Like overturn Roe versus Wade. Like you know what I'm trying to say. Like help <laughs> Trump cheat in the election. She she didn't even want to recluse herself from it if something happened next next week. You know what I'm trying to say. I got you. You know. Well, so, and, 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 other- and, and in this case, you go, okay, it should be a democracy, but it's really not. And even though they say it on TV every day, we all yeah. know it's a lie. <laughs> it's really a republic. <laughs> uh, I forgot there was something else I was gonna bring up, but I can't find it. Um, anyway, yeah, the, the point is overall, <laughs> we we think we're a democracy, but we're truly not. It's right. not my it's not majority rules. Nope. Um, it's just you're represented by someone you vote in, and yep. you again, as always, you hope that they are doing things correctly. Oh, I know what it was. There were some other things like, you know, the laws that are um, presented and, and brought mm-hmm. um, in front of Congress. Mm-hmm. A lot of times those aren't even things that, again, the people want. Exactly. It's things that have been created that- and written by lot yep. of lobbyists and others, and then they push it through, you know? Right. So, yep. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. It. The last thing I want to say before we go is, this is another this is another reason why the local laws are so important because those yes. are laws that directly affect us That's and true. you know guys because it is really a republic it's 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 actually more important for you to research the local laws on November right. 3rd and yeah. vote those interests in than the actual president you know the stuff rolls downhill you know what I mean and the not stuff, a- go ahead Oh, I was going to say, and not only just for presidential elections, you also want to um, vote in the midterms every two exactly. years. Exactly. So, you know, as if you're um, into, if you're wanting to make change or just be on top of things and, and know what is uh, going on in your community, mm-hmm. you, you, or you want to be involved in it, you need to, um, like you say, research, 
and be prepared to vote um, every two years. Absolutely. And yeah, again, because it's, it's a republic, all those things are going to be uh, far more impactful to your life than who the president is. Exactly. If you don't believe me, look it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, very true. And I got to say, I remember as a, you know, very, being younger, only thing I was concerned about was voting for the president. And I was, um, and then I would live in certain cities and I would never really vote or considering the of the local stuff because I was like, oh, well, I'm only here for a little bit. Dude, I'm, I'm not really following everything. Right. And I just let it go slide by. And yeah, all of a sudden, I got to say, these past four years, I really started to under, um, look up, look it up and, and find out that, you know, there's a lot of things that are important. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. really do hope people filled out the census because, that, again, that comes to how you represent it, um, how your state is going to be represented, how many, um, yeah, how the larger you are i think that goes with the almost with the electoral college or something like that something like that yeah it, right. it depends on yeah. what they do you know what they allow for those states or cities depending on how many people, people they have yeah. and stuff like that yes yeah, yes yeah, it's, it's real trickery man well i know i know one thing i'm going to do later uh today this is friday so i'll be going to seattle for a couple of days i'll be back sunday and monday all day I am going to be going over. I've already been make, taking notes on all the, the ballot initiatives and all that, and I pretty much know on a lot of them whether I'm voting no or yes on prop this and that. I'm going to finish yeah. going through those because usually this, this is my first time taking it seriously. You know, uh, usually yeah. I would just wash over those, you know, but I'm going to uh, finish going over those Monday, and I'll yeah. be there early Tuesday morning, brother. I was going to do mailing this year, but I decided not to because a lot of crap they were talking about. I said, you know what? I've always gone in person. You know, yeah. let me be on the right side of history. It may be our first African American female vice president. I said, let me go in like I always did and do it in person. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I that's think what I'm when doing I'll, I'll on probably, next Tuesday, I'll probably be dropping off my ballot early and just put it in the Dropbox. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, it, definitely people. If you're, um, well, if you're in California, there's a website, um, CA Early voting.sos.ca.gov mm-hmm. and in it you can put in your location and it'll tell you exactly where you can um, drop off your um, ballot right yeah yep that's that's it smith so yeah that, that's our show guys thank you for tuning in to the hpr chronicles podcast with shakorn smith don't forget to follow us on social media and definitely subscribe on YouTube. The YouTube channel is ISNT Group Digital. Hit that notification button so you'll know when the shows are coming out. And uh, thank you on all the streaming platforms. You know who you all are. We're everywhere from iHeartRadio to iTunes to Spotify to everywhere. Thank you for listening, guys. And uh, give us some thumbs up and some likes and comments and, you know, mention something in the description. All right. All right. Thanks for checking in, Smith, and I'll see you, you soon. Keep yep, yep, keep, keep keep your mask on. They say the the cases are, are going up. Wink, wink. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Have a good time to see you. All right. I'll see you, brother. Have a good one. Right. Peace. Peace.